Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about SoFi's SOFI stock and Palantir's PLTR stock, and we're going to be going over their latest news updates and price predictions. So we're going to start off talking about SoFi stock and why SoFi stock is actually starting to climb again, and we're going to see if this trajectory is going to continue on throughout the rest of the year. We're also going to talk about how SoFi Technologies is a top-tier fintech stock to actually buy right now and then lastly we're going to be going over the latest news updates for palantir's short interest as well as the latest news developments and price targets among analysts so for more videos on sofi or pltr stock remember to go and smash that like button right now comment your thoughts down below subscribe if you are new and without further ado let's jump right into today's stories so if you didn't know sofi technologies is a fintech company or a financial technology company that offers an all-in-one inclusive app that gives their customers basically anything they could possibly need in terms of financial services and or financial products. Right now, the current SOFI stock price is trading at around $6.90. However, this is not terrible news because recently it was actually upgraded by an analyst from Piper Sandler, who increased his overall rating for the company from a neutral rating to an overweight rating. However, this has not stopped the SOFI stock from falling at least 50% from the start of the new year. So the analyst upgraded the SOFI stock to an overweight rating. However, he did reduce his price target from a price target of $12 down to a price target of $10. And the reason for this is because the analyst has acknowledged the current stock market environment and the rising interest rates, which is going to be a huge negative for the company going forward. However, he says that the market is technically trading at at a huge discount right now. In particular, he thinks that the SOFI stock price is trading at a huge discount right now, which is very positive news for SOFI stock investors. He also thinks that SOFI Technologies is going to beat on their EBITDA or earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization during their second quarter earnings report, and they're going to continue to improve their EBITDA well into 2023. He also thinks that Joe Biden is going to not extend the student loan moratorium past August 31st, and with the student loan moratorium ending, it's going to cause more students or former students to refinance their student loans with SoFi Technologies because that's where they make a large portion of their overall revenues. However, for this particular point, I am disagreeing with the author of this article and the analyst from Piper Sandler because I think the student loan moratorium or the freeze on students or former students having to pay on their student debt, I think that's going to be extended all the way until the end of 2022 and maybe it's going to end in the beginning of 2023. However, we know that the company is set to have fantastic revenue growth from now until 2024, and with this revenue growth, we're going to see positive stock price appreciation with the revenue growth from 2023 and 2024. However, let's dive in to see what other analysts think of the SOFI stock price. So for instance, one analyst actually has a $14 price target, which is substantially higher from what the stock is currently trading at right now. He also thinks that SOFI's earnings are very strong, and he believes that the EBI TDA is a very achievable. So the projections and the trajectory and forecasts by management is actually very achievable for SoFi Technologies to actually bring in for their quarter two and quarter three reports, which is absolutely phenomenal news. However, the forecasts for their quarter two revenue is going to be somewhat of a disappointment to some investors, which is why for quarter two, I'm not very bullish on the second quarter because of recent developments internally within the company, such as them changing their overall projections. However, once we get past the hump of quarter two, and if the overall stock market ends up flattening out or even starts to increase again, this could be extremely good for SoFi Technologies in particular. So this analyst says that he is anticipating a strong full year guidance for both revenues and EBI TDA. Likewise, Morgan Stanley has a price target of around $10, which again is still above the stock's current price, which is good news. They believe, however, However, that the current student loan moratorium or the freeze on student loan debt is going to be extended until the first quarter of 2023, and that's actually what I personally believe as well. The best news about this is that SoFi Technologies Management already has adjusted projections to take the worst case into consideration. So for instance, they have already given us new revenue guidance and EPS guidance if the student loan moratorium is extended until quarter one of 2023. So they've already taken into consideration 
mention the worst case scenario. So if the student loan moratorium doesn't end on August 31st and this somehow negatively impacts the stock price, it's going to be a phenomenal buying opportunity because these projections are already taking that into consideration. So this would clearly be an overreaction from investors and the market selling off this phenomenal stock. Also, I want to add a slight bearish tint to this because SoFi's mortgage business is taking longer than expected to ramp up. However, when they actually start to ramp up their mortgage business, such as in 2023 and 2024, the stock price still looks absolutely phenomenal for long-term growth. I also want to show you that although this particular stock is beaten down and the overall stock market is downtrending right now, the market is clearly oversold. So this is a phenomenal time to buy various indices and oversold growth stocks such as SoFi Technologies because according to their current metrics, they are beating on their projections and they are competing with traditional payment and credit card companies on their own terms. This makes SoFi Technologies a fantastic fintech company and they're also appealing to the younger millennial generation. They have a phenomenal business model and we can't judge SoFi Technologies off of their SOFI stock price volatility. We actually need to judge them based on their business and fundamentals, not necessarily their stock price, because clearly their stock price is disconnected from what the company is bringing in. In essence, SoFi is doing phenomenal as a company, and the only reason why their stock price is being beat down so much is due to the overall stock market downtrending. Also, if we look at the technical side of their stock, technical experts and analysts actually anticipate that this stock is a good buying opportunity right now. However, does this mean that the stock is going to surge back up to around $25 in the year of 2022? Although that's not impossible, I personally would not be betting on that. Because right now, Wall Street and tip ranks, along with other institutions and analysts, say that SoFi is a moderate buy rating right now with an average price target of around $12.04, which implies roughly around a 78% potential upside for the overall stock. Right now, the low-end bearish price prediction for the next 12 months is $7. The average price consensus is $12.04, and the high-end price target is $22, with seven analysts saying to buy the company, five analysts saying to hold the company, and the current stock price trading between $6 and $7 right now. This is absolutely a phenomenal time to buy the company as long as you are already not overexposed to this company. If this company already makes up a large portion of your portfolio, this could be a warning just to move on to another growth stock, or at least build your foundation of strong blue chip investments and ETF or indices depending on your personal preference. We don't want to overexpose ourselves too much to single individual stocks such as SoFi Technologies and Palantir Technologies, even though in my opinion these are pretty solid companies if you are willing to hold these companies for the next decade or over the long term. Now with that being said, let's move into our Palantir Technologies news updates and we're going to talk about their short interest. So Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company that serves both commercial clients as well as government enterprises and from last time we talked about them, their short interest has risen by around 5.48% to where now the company has a short interest of around 6.74% and in my personal opinion this is not very high. Because if we compare this to another company such as SoFi Technologies that has a short interest of around 20%, clearly SoFi Technologies is in for a short squeeze. And some investors even think that a reverse stock split is going to happen or potentially the company could be bought out right now. Now, I personally don't have opinions on either of those things. However, a reverse stock split would not necessarily be bad and I don't think the company would actually institute a buyout or go for a buyout as of right now. But going back to Palantir Technologies, Technologies. If you didn't know, short interest, according to this article by Benzinga, is the number of shares that have been sold short but have not been covered or closed out. Short selling is when a trader sells shares of a company they do not own with the hope that the price will fall. Basically, you are shorting a stock. And if the stock price falls, you are going to make money off of that stock because you entered into most likely a put contract. And if we look at Palantir's short interest, we can see that it's stayed relatively stable over the last couple of months. So there is real no huge developments for this. And I don't think Palantir Technologies in particular is going to perform a short squeeze. However, according to Benzinga Pro, we see that their peers on average have a short interest of around 2.45%, which is extremely low. So 
Clearly, Palantir, as well as SoFi Technologies, are being targeted by short sellers, which again is lowering the overall stock price. Now, with that being said, Palantir Technologies did have a new price target come out by Deutsche Bank, and that price target is around $11. Right now, the current stock price trades for around $8, with the low-end analyst price target coming in at $6, and the high-end Palantir stock price target coming in at $25 per share. Overall, Deutsche Bank has a whole the rating for this company, and I actually tend to agree with the current stock market environment. If you're going to get into this company at or around six to eight dollars, it seems to be a good buying opportunity as long as you are not already overexposed to the company. Like we said, for SoFi Technologies, if you already own a good amount of Palantir Technologies, please move on and diversify yourself to another growth stock. This is going to help you for the long term, and it's going to lower your risk of just going all in on one stock, and that's not investing, that would be gambling. So again, and always make sure you have a strong foundation of ETFs and blue chip stocks in your portfolio and always be safe because you don't want to take on too much risk. Now, for Palantir Technologies, clearly the stock has been absolutely dropping dramatically and very aggressively. However, I think this is a good buying opportunity because it is lower than their DPO price. And the reason why I think that is because literally it is, and we're going to talk about that later. However, for geopolitical tensions over in the East, specifically in Eastern Europe, the CEO, who is Alex Karp, said that the threat of a nuclear event is so much higher than is being presented in the public. It's almost surreal to watch the coverage. So clearly, people are going to flock to Palantir Technologies, and various governments are going to want Palantir Technologies because their data analytics are both effective, safe, they have government clients, they're trusted, and they are secure. More good news about Palantir is if you didn't know, Palantir has more than doubled their U.S. commercial companies, which I literally called over a year ago that this was going to happen, that Palantir is going to focus on scaling their commercial business while their government gives them stable revenue in the meantime, and their commercial clients are going to be what takes them up profitable sometime in 2025, while SoFi Technologies is set to become profitable toward the end of 2024. Overall, their commercial sales grew by around 54% to 204.5 million million dollar, which absolutely obliterated estimates for their commercial segment. They also have a fantastic goal of becoming the default operating system for data across the U.S. government, and there is plenty of money in government contracting. But now about the current stock price. When the PLTR stock debuted on the New York Stock Exchange, it was around $10 per share for their DPO, which is a direct public offering. Palantir did not have an initial public offering, also known as an IPO, which means that they did not hire underwriters to evaluate demand and set the price for the company. They literally just threw their stock on the market and then supply and demand is taking over. And right now, clearly investors are very scared, so they are liquidating their stock. However, this doesn't mean that Palantir is a bad company. I also want to add that recently on May 11th, RBC Capital Analysts actually downgraded the PLTR stock to an underperform rating and a stock price target of around $7. Because you all know I like giving you the bullish positive news, but I weigh it again the bearish negative news because I think you need to know both sides before you make an educated investment decisions. However, overall, I think Palantir Technologies is going to achieve their 30% CAGR, which is their compounding annual growth rate for their revenues from now until 2025. However, other analysts and financial reporters have their doubt, but I am still overall very bullish for Palantir Technologies and I'm willing to hold the company for 10 years. Now, with that being said, I'm not overexposed to either Palantir or SoFi Technologies. Both of them make up together collectively almost 10% of my portfolio. However, individually, I only allocate around 4-5% to depending on which one we are talking about. And similar to SoFi Technologies, the guidance for quarter 2, particularly for their revenue and earnings per share, is not going to be very impressive. So once we get over the hump of quarter 2, hopefully the market is going to be recovering from then on. But I would love to hear your price targets for the SOFI stock and the PLTR stock. Remember to go and smash that like button right now. Comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.